Good morning, everybody. I'm sorry I'm not in London to present in person this update on natural hydrogen exploration in South Australia. This morning, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, our understanding of the geology and why South Australia. Also talk about the licensing regime, which is essential to get people on the ground and uh, doing exploration. The department is responsible for regulating the uh, upstream petroleum and mining industries, including new natural hydrogen exploration. We also gather data that companies generate that's required to be submitted under legislation. And we have people that are involved in doing applied geoscience to attract investment and interest in the state's prospectivity. Three things have really put South Australia on the global map of natural hydrogen occurrences. The first was the work of Zagonic, who in 2020 did an amazing uh, review of hydrogen occurrences around the, around the globe. And this drew attention to indications in Australia, and in particular, South Australia. Professor Isabel Moretti's work on potential fairy circles, the salt lakes on York Peninsula, Kangaroo Island, the Yulgarn and Eastern Australia attracted interest as well. And then we made some regulatory changes that actually enabled us to issue licenses for explorers to target natural hydrogen. All of these have uh, drawn a lot of attention onto South Australia. I've included the Aussie base map that uh, was generated by Geognostics in 2021 to cue you into the big picture setting of uh, South Australia. The state's situated between the Archean Shield of Western Australia, the West Australian Craton, and the mobile orogenic belts in the eastern states. The Gawler Craton is late Archean to early Mesoproterozoic in age and the Kernamona province is Paleo to Mesoproterozoic. They're the two large complex basement terrains in the state that consist of uh, mafic and felsic igneous intrusions and volcanics, moderate to high grade metamorphics. The geological record in South Australia has also preserved a unique history of sedimentation from the Neoproterozoic to Ordovician and from the early Devonian to recent. So what does this mean for prospectivity for natural hydrogen. We'll, we'll do a tick box exercise. Has South Australia got hydrogen indications in drill holes? Yes, they're shown in yellow dots. Have we got ancient basement complexes which contain iron and or uranium rich rocks? Yes, we do. So there's the potential to generate hydrogen via radiolytic processes and the oxidation of iron rich minerals. We've got fractured and seismically active source areas on the cratons and in the basins. And the deep seated faults can both channel the hydrogen that's being generated up and introduce water down for more chemical reactions. The sedimentary cover contains salt in places. It's also got active aqu aquifer systems. So it's got the potential to reservoir and trap migrating hydrogen. We've also got a lot of older and deep basins where you've got the possibility to decompose organic matter and over mature source rocks may also generate hydrogen. And we've got the potential for surface hydrogen seeps as well. As I mentioned, the work that Isabel Moretti's done on potential fairy circles. So there's a number of things that tick the boxes for potential uh, hydrogen sources in South Australia. So. I guess cutting to the chase, just have a look at uh, uranium and iron occurrences and mines in South Australia, along with surface heat flow, because the state has been explored for geothermal energy as well. So there's mesoproterozoic granites, felsic volcanics and gneisses in the Gawla Craton and the Kernamona province, which contain anomalously elevated uranium and thorium concentrations relative to the global proterozoic averages. And these are generating high heat flows. And an example is the mesoproterozoic Hiltaba suite, which hosts the Olympic Dam copper gold uranium deposit, and which forms basement in the area of the Ramsey oil bore on York Peninsula. 
So South Australia has large regions of interpreted high crustal temperature and high heat flow associated with these berry mesoproterozoic granite intrusives, which occur at depths of over three kilometres and form important geothermal exploration targets. So I think there's some possibilities that uh, the geothermal story may inform the hydrogen exploration story in the, uh, in the state. The other part of the, the, the mix for generating natural hydrogen is iron rich minerals. And if you look at the map uh, with the, uh, the red circles indicating iron ore occurrences and mines, uh, the state is certainly well endowed with iron rich rocks. Back in 2022, Dr. Bettina Bendel, who was then at the Department for Energy and Mining, published a synthesis of uh, natural hydrogen plays and play elements in the department's MESA journal publication. You can access it off the department's website. Bettina and I pulled the play elements together and then did a very high level screening across the state's basement provinces. So you can see the hydrogen play elements in the table at the, and then the provinces and where we think with the green boxes, we're getting the play elements in each province. So as an example, all of the provinces have ultramafics, gabbros and mafic intrusives. Most of the provinces have got iron rich granitoid intrusives. We've got a couple like the Gawler Craton and the Mount Painter Inlier that have uranium rich rocks. And uh, in the case of the Gawler Craton, it hosts the Olympic Dam copper gold uranium deposit. We have banded iron formations on the Gawler Craton, some ferruginous jury crusts, the Musgrave Block and the Camman 2 Fold Belt. And a lot of these basement provinces are very old. There's structural complexity with deep and active faults. We've also got the hydrogen shows that people are no doubt familiar with now on the Gawler Craton and in the Canman 2 fold belt. We applied the same high level screening approach to the state sedimentary basins. So you can see here the hydrogen play elements that uh, Dr. Bendel identified are mafic intrusives or extrusives, which can be a source or potentially a seal for natural hydrogen, ironstones, salt anhydrite and aquifers, which could act as seals, deep faults, over mature source rocks, and we've flagged the hydrogen shows. So if we go across the, the various basins, the Adelaide Rift Complex and Arawi Basin tick all the boxes. So you'd regard them as being reasonably uh, prospective for hydrogen. The Officer Basin is ticking a lot of the boxes. And it's interesting, Dr. Peter Haynes from the West Australian Geological Survey has done a look at the Officer Basin uh, for helium prospectivity as well as hydrogen. And we think that uh, the story extends into South Australia. The Stansbury Basin is where the Ramsey oil bore was drilled and we do have the hydrogen shows. And it looks like there is some anhydride in the section. So that's got to be regarded as, as, a, as a valid uh, target. Cooper, Eramanga and Warburton Basins uh, have uh, some of the uh, elements of uh, hydrogen systems in them and there are some shows. I think one of the primary sources here could be over mature source rocks and possibly some hydrogen from deep radiogenic granites that were explored for geothermal energy. The Otway Basin is a rift basin that formed when Australia and Antarctica separated. Robe 1 had hydrogen shows in it, but we've also got wells that have mantle derived carbon dioxide, that is the old Caroline 1 well and the Nangwari 1 discovery. So the Otway could have the potential for deep sourced hydrogen. Exciting geology and prospectivity are only part of the picture. To get on the ground and actually explore for natural hydrogen, you need a petroleum exploration license. The map shows granted licenses in blue, license applications in pink, and in that blue rectangular area, that's where we're seeing the interest in natural hydrogen license applications. So licenses are issued for three five-year terms, 
and the operators are required to relinquish one third of the area at the end of each term. Discoveries are held by petroleum production licences. To apply for a PEL, you pay an application fee, you give us a five year work program and evidence of your technical and financial capacity to undertake the work program and rehabilitation. The green hatchet areas are competitive tender regions and in these areas vacant acreage is only available via a department issued acreage release which is based on competitive work program bidding. The licensing regime is part of the Petroleum and Geothermal Energy Act 2000. The Act provides a single window into government for natural hydrogen exploration and production. It includes underground storage and pipeline transport for all colours of hydrogen. So if you look at the little cartoons, uh, this talk is very much about natural hydrogen or gold or white hydrogen. And you can see that the Petroleum and Geothermal Energy Act regulates underground storage and pipeline transport. Green hydrogen or manufactured hydrogen, and we've got some very interesting projects coming out in South Australia on this. For manufactured hydrogen, the Petroleum and Geothermal Energy Act is the regulatory framework for underground storage and pipeline transport. The Petroleum and Geothermal Energy Act has in fact formed the basis for a new piece of legislation, the Hydrogen and Renewable Energy Act, which will regulate the manufacture of green hydrogen. Both bills are being tabled uh, for Parliament later this year. This map shows the area of interest for natural hydrogen explorers. There's over 40 over-the-counter licence applications that were lodged for petroleum exploration licences uh, by seven companies since February 2021. The applications are colour coded by each company. The department assesses the applications for their validity and if it's all good, the licences can be offered to the applicants. In areas where native title exists, a native title agreement is required between the government, the applicant and the native title claimants or native title holders. The first expiration licence was granted in July 2021 to Gold Hydrogen and that's shown in yellow on York Peninsula and Kangaroo Island. The second petroleum expiration licence was granted to H2EX in June 2022 on Air Peninsula and that's shown in green. We heard from Grant McMurtry of 2H Resources yesterday about their plans and their licence applications are shown in purple on the map. The map shows the current gas storage licensing situation in South Australia with applications in blue and granted licences in pink. It also shows the current petroleum pipeline network. Some of the applicants for hydrogen exploration in South Australia are also applying for gas storage exploration licences, which gives them the rights to establish the nature, extent and feasibility of an underground storage project. If they're successful, in delineating storage and having hydrogen to store, uh, they can go for a gas storage license to get on with putting gas in the ground. And of course, the pipelines allow the transmission of regulated substances in South Australia. Gold hydrogen were the front runners for natural hydrogen exploration in South Australia and lodged the first license applications back in 2021. The company has been busy since then and are planning to drill a dedicated hydrogen exploration well on York Peninsula in October this year. The well's going to twin the historic Ramsey oil bore and the photograph shows taking gas sample from that old oil bore in 1931. The sample was analysed at the Government Gas Works Laboratory. The company has acquired airborne gravity and magnetics uh, in a survey that was flown earlier this year and have completed a soil gas survey that was carried out with the CSIRO. On the map, 
you can see the Ramsey oil bore and uh, some of the limited seismic surveying data that's available from the department. The next slide has a closer look at the Y82A A1 seismic line. And for more information on the project, including the, uh, in the regulatory documentation that uh, Gold Hydrogen are required to provide before they undertake drilling, please refer to their website. So here's that seismic section that I mentioned in the previous slide. It goes very close to the Ramsey oil bore and Gold Hydrogen have provided their interpretation. The Ramsey oil bore recorded hydrogen shows in early Cambrian carbonates and you can see in the table that they got up to 84% hydrogen from the Parara limestone at a depth of 507.8 metres. The well is planned to tag granite basement, which the department interprets as being the Hiltaba Suite granite, which I've mentioned earlier, and it's believed to be the source of the hydrogen. They're going to have a full sampling program on the well and are also looking at a second well about 500 metres west of the first well to penetrate more of the granite section. H2EX were awarded their petroleum exploration licence in June 2022. They've also lodged a number of applications uh, around the state in prospective areas and have kicked off the right to negotiate process uh, for two of their license applications. Once that process is rolled through, the government uh, will be able to grant licenses. They've also lodged second ranked applications in a number of areas as well. And you can see on the map, PEL 691, is the granted license and they've actually kicked off uh, exploration in that block. H2EX have hit the ground running since PEL 691 was granted. The company has entered into a research agreement with the CSIRO who completed a desktop study on the air license area in December 2022. H2EX and CSIRO have developed a fieldwork agreement to undertake soil gas sampling and the survey was completed in May this year. The photographs show the CSIRO field team carrying out the survey. H2EX have reported positive detections of hydrogen and methane uh, that were encountered during the survey. On the 30th of June this year, the Australian government announced that H2EX and research partners were successful in their application for a cooperative research centres project grant for accelerating exploration and extraction of renewable natural hydrogen. H2EX is partnering with the University of Adelaide, Australian National University and Black and & Veatch to undertake the project to enable green and passive exploration techniques to accelerate the discovery of natural hydrogen. The research into extraction solutions will provide a clear pathway to drill and extract low cost natural hydrogen. If you want more information uh, about this uh, grant and the exploration program, please contact H2EX. Well, it's very early days for natural hydrogen globally, let alone in South Australia. However, South Australia does have evidence of prospective geology and natural hydrogen occurrences. We have a regulatory licensing and investment framework regime in place, and that's enabled us to grant Australia's first exploration licenses targeting natural hydrogen. So we've got 40 license applications and two licenses up and running, very exciting. We've also got the framework in place for explorers to apply for licenses to store hydrogen underground and licenses to transmit hydrogen in pipelines. What's exciting to me as a geologist is the upcoming company exploration activity is going to test a diversity of natural hydrogen plays in a range of the state's geology. It's expected that the legislation, uh, the Hydrogen and Renewable Energy Act, which covers green hydrogen, and the Petroleum and Geothermal Energy Act, which covers natural hydrogen, will be in place by the end of this year. So there's more regulatory certainty for uh, companies. So to conclude, watch this space. It's going to be extremely exciting. I'd like to thank the organisers for the opportunity to present virtually to you today, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.